Okay, many questions to ask there, and I fortunately got some from you. Please take a seat. Sure. Um, and I got some from you um, over Twitter, and um, uh, that's really, really lovely. And before I dive into those that are concerning all of the three of you, um, I'll have to pinpoint you, Alex, a bit, because um, there's, um, you know, the way I set this up, of course, when like people are thinking about now, okay, oh, Facebook, they know everything about me, right? And, and now they do this thing with AI and so what's gonna happen? Um, I don't wanna ask you science fiction question, but the really, really practical use case that you're trying to explore there, because the way you told us is about, it's really all about text as an interface, right? It's about not having an app to buy flowers and an app to buy books, but just, you know, a window to, to type in, I need X, and then magic or AI solves the problem. Is, is that the plan to sell things? Is this more about the play about advertising? Or, or what's going on here, like in the, the business kind of um, uh, deliberations you guys make? So, yeah, so you, you might have heard of uh, a project we started a few months ago called Facebook M. Mm -hmm. So M is your um, personal assistant in uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, so you can text to M and ask anything you need. So if you need to send a gift to somebody, you need to book a restaurant, you need to arrange travel, M can do it for you. Mm -hmm. um, it, um, it's very early, early stage of a very ambitious project. And right now, it's not powered by AI only, by, by a combination of AI and, and people that we call trainer. So it's an AI which is supervised by people. Nice. Um, and so we do that because um, it's a matter of user experience. Uh, mm. pe people more and more, young generations, want to prefer to use text than apps or other. And actually, apps is not really good. At, it's not good for everything. Mm. Um, you know, commerce started as a conversational experience. You enter a shop, you talk to, to somebody, and you. And in, in the web evolution, we took that into a website with catalog. And then when, the mobile, when we shifted to mobile, we just shrunk down the e-commerce website into a mobile. A website or app, and it just doesn't work. And so it, 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 it looks to me that the next phase is to have commerce back as a conversational experience. Mm -hmm. And so this is how we, what we are trying to do now. And not just commerce, but also any service you might need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So, so you're, you know, I mean, like Apple and Google dominate the app ecosystems. And what do you do as Facebook? You find a way people don't have to use apps. So that's gorgeous. Um, so how many people um, are using M at the moment, and when can I? So it's very, as, as I said, it's very early stage of an experiment. Uh, like a few thousand, a few, yeah, to like 20,000 people have access to M in uh, California, and we are still experimenting with that. So it's not, you won't see M released uh, everywhere, you know, next year. Or it's a very long-term project. OK, OK. Um, Henry, when you heard Minley, and you know we we had you know the science fiction stuff and all of that, and both of you said like okay yeah it's really about you know those solving sort of solvers and those optimizing problems and that that pattern seeing those patterns and all of that, this is not something to be scared about. But obviously, people, given the way we try to extrapolate things as, as human beings, there is sort of that, that gut feeling that something, something is happening here. Um, how you guys deal with that? Do you have, you know, angry web designers at your doors with their, I don't know, with their trackpads throwing at you? Or uh, how do people react in the space, your former colleagues, um, uh, to what you're doing there? Yeah, so I think uh, there's obviously some web designers out there that do do take the uh, approach of being being scared or angry with what we do, but in general, I mean, there's so much web out there, and so few capable web designers that I think before we start uh, stealing anybody's bread, there's going to be a lot of sites we need to first design. 
right? And then as a designer, I can see that as a tool, right? That sort of like gives me superpowers in a way. So how do you sell that so that people don't see it as a threat, but like really augmentation of the strengths? Yeah, so the message we have even on our, on our website is that uh, obviously the idea here is to allow designers to scale where, uh, yeah, you can uh, work on more the kind of uh, mm. uh, guidelines of the design and then, you know, let the machine do the grunt work of churning out stuff following those guidelines. Right. Minli, um, so obviously these guys are more concerned about just making it work in the first place than about what could happen down the road one day if it actually does work. So, I mean, a lot of that, of what you do is, yeah, we try and it's an experiment, as you say, and yeah, it will need time and then psh, we figure it out as we go. There's different sciences, so like um, uh, genetics, where also at the beginning we said, yeah, sure, we try to make something work and then we see and figure it out. But there was a very clear movement there also, like championed from the green movement, where we said, no, we won't just wait and see what happens and figure it out as we go. So could you tell us about maybe a bit what computer science could learn from um, what happened with genetics and perhaps the relationships between how the, the, you know, the activists for the green in the green movement worked with that kind of tension? Maybe there is some historic lesson. Well, maybe. I mean, we, I mean it's all very speculative uh, about what's going to happen, and I totally see uh, your point that it, it's, it's, it's not like in the movies, it's not as fast and it's not as good, and it's extremely difficult and complex but um, the whole computer science is always just think about what, what can be done. Mm. And they never think about whether everything that can be done should be done. And I think that's, that's a major difference, is difference to, to other sciences where there's always the question, do we really, uh, in genetics or, or in medicine, we don't do everything we could do. I mean, we could do a lot more in cloning or whatever, designer babies or whatever, than we are actually doing because we think it's potentially dangerous or it's potentially harmful. And I think the computer scientists should think about these things as well, even if it's not uh, terminators or killer robots, if it, even if it's just um, changing um, the, way our, the way we work or changing the workforces or changing the labor market, even mm -hmm. if it's just something uh, less spectacular. Yeah, so actually I disagree with you less than I thought <laughs> <laughs> I would. Um, and I completely agree with you that like genetics, AI will have to be you know, supervised or with like councils or laws, I don't know what. I, I was just saying it, it won't be tomorrow and I don't know what is the, the right time, the right way to do it, but I, I totally uh, agree uh, with you. Uh, something I want to mention is like, so the, the, three, the three big companies doing AI research today are Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. Every single research uh, is published. Uh, every line of code is open source for the three companies. Microsoft was the last one to not open source their, their stuff, and they just did a few weeks ago. So I think, um, it's more open, like crazy scientists doing genetics in a laboratory, in a secret laboratory. I think, I think it's more open and we learned a little bit from the lessons of the past, but I'm not saying we don't need to supervise anything. Mindly, how long does it take in Switzerland to pass a law from, like, from really like zero to, okay, there's a law and it is in practice? Well, that depends, but it will take several years usually because um, there's a draft and then all the groups can say what they think about the drafts and the draft is revised and the, the revised bill gets into parliament and then there's one chamber and then the other chamber and then there are differences. So and then maybe takes, there's a referendum. So, and maybe there's a referendum. So it always takes quite a long time. And since we, I think it's one of the, 
biggest problem in politics is that we always deal with the mistakes from the past and we never deal with what might possibly uh, come in the future or how we want to shape the future. And I think, I don't think you have to have a pass a bill tomorrow, but we should start now thinking about what what, what, what we could do or what we should do in terms of, of supervision, in terms of regulation, because it's not that easy. So it, mm. will, take, it will take time to have a good, good solution. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, legislation takes, takes time. Uh, software development uh, sometimes also takes a long time. Sometimes it happens very, very fast. But on the other hand, I think, uh, what we've seen is that the effects of technology on the society always take more time. Like, imagine, you know, let's say touchscreen smartphones, uh, even though, you know, there have been devices like that out, out there for quite a while. Once iPhone came out, it still took years and years before, you know, majority of, let's say, adults started having one in their pocket. Mm -hmm. and AI changing the job market will most likely be a similar case where, it, you know, let's say self-driving cars, somebody has to build those cars and change their business models to accommodate that and all. So it, it will take years in any case. Okay, so, but, but, but let's say eight to 10 years and if it has international implications, certainly that amount of time and I mean, you showed your scale, right? The AI scale. So if we fast forward eight to 10 years, um, uh, and we, we keep in mind that there's like this, uh, there's Moore's law and all of that. Um, do you have an idea how we can like, at the moment start a, a political conversation that sort of gets us at the point where we need to be in 10 years now? I hope you can help us because, I mean, if you, if somebody knows where this field's going to be in 10 years, I hope you can help there. So I'm concerned that it's, it's too hard to, to start this conversation today because the concepts are still very, very vague and, mm. and, and, and blurred and we don't know exactly what we are talking about. And if you ask me what, what will be, what, what we'll get in eight years, I, I just don't know. And I can try to make up something, but, it, um, and so, I think it's hard to, to start mm. this conversation maybe at the political level today, but mm. at the ethical, philosophical level, it's certainly the right time to, to talk about it. Mm. So your, both of your companies are US-based, um, uh, San Francisco, the Valley, um, and probably that's where you know, policymakers will have to react first in some kind of way. I mean, you guys have, you could actually be run over by a self-driving car, right? We, we're, in, we're safe here. <laughs> um, uh, for the moment, I think, you know, those, the, the bosses of EPFL, they're, yeah, they're not so dangerous at the moment with like 15 kilo kilometers an hour. So um, do you see already um, a discussion over there in the US? Um, do you see effects on the work that you're doing from that discussion? Um, uh, are they, is there anything going on? Well, to be honest, I think Europe is actually kind of thinking a little bit more ahead on that, like uh, you're seeing these conversations about basic income in a lot of countries, some trials, etc. cetera. So, uh, uh, that's, that's an area, but of course in the US, for instance, they just recently uh, uh, decreed that self-driving cars are perfectly fine. The software can be seen as a driver in, in the view of law, uh, which is uh, kind of funny looking from, I'm, I'm from Finland, and in, in Finland the, uh, dip, uh, the uh, legislators realized that they never mentioned cars having a driver in the <laughs> regulations, so actually self-driving cars have been legal all along because... <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see a self-driving car run over somebody, but I saw a self-driving car uh, getting a ticket on the 101 freeway because it was too slow and it, it actually got a ticket. Um, yeah, I think the US are more in a... In a, in a their, their approach is more let's do it and see what happens. Let's shoot first and discuss uh, later. And we see this with uh, this kind of adoption where it's, they are very fast to, 
to improve these kind of new things, and, and they will be fast to correct the course if it's not going well. And we are more cautious and in Europe. I, I'm not saying which one is better, it's just different. Mainly. Um, so in, in politics, um, understanding what's going on and really like grasping the signs and developments that's go that are going on is one thing. But the other is then sort of aligning this with what's at stake, with the interests of who you're representing and so on. Um, do you think we could already try to calculate how the questions that you mentioned um, uh, in, in your great presentations, um, like one or two of them, how they would be playing out sort of like on a, on a left-right spectrum? Um, or do you think that had nothing to do with the left or the right, but it's just common sense? Well, <laughs> that's always, <laughs> usually if you're on one side, you think you have common sense and the other, the <laughs> sure. the other okay. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, um, well, you have two problems. One, one problem is that everybody, if you talk about these things, um, everybody thinks you're either crazy or, or um, they don't care because, I mean, everyone cares about what's happening now and not what happens in 20 years. And, and the other problem is that people think there's some kind of natural development of, uh, they say like, oh, you have the, in the Industrial Revolution, well, it changed a lot, but then in the end, everybody got new jobs and everybody got happy. And, and um, what they forget is that it, that wasn't a very short process, but that was a process of about, of about 100 years. And for most of the time, it wasn't a very nice thing for the majority of people. And it didn't come just by themselves, I mean, the growth of the middle class and, and all these things that didn't happen naturally, but that was a political decision. And the problem is always, or the problem is always, can we do something before something bad happens or do we have to wait until something bad happens like the Great Depression to, 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 uh, to change the laws and that's something that's, that's still very, very open because that's not a, even though um, the whole uh, fourth industrial revolution could potentially have huge impacts, it's not something that interests many, many people the left or the right, for that matter. Hmm, okay. So I guess that leaves us with the one finding that we just need this kind of dialogue. We need to have the folks from the valley um, with the people from the federal palace and we have to make sure there is actually that exchange because otherwise we'll always be in that circle. Oh, is it too early? And then it will be too late. And I think with that, um, uh, what I can say is that I'm very, very happy that you guys made it over, that you could come mainly, and I really think that this fruitful discussion is something that we should be continuing, and of course Lyft is a great forum for exactly this kind of discussion. So many thanks indeed for the three of you for coming over and for all your great remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wait a second, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Because there is one more thing. Have a surprise speaker for you who knows nothing or next to nothing about AI, doesn't have a lot of money, has no real job, but has access to one of the most powerful AI engines that they are. Let's see what happens in such a constellation. And for that, please help me welcoming Silvio Andrica.